What's up guys? I know it's been a long time since I posted a video, but today's gonna be a good day. So I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be redoing some paint on my truck. Sorry, you can't see. I'm gonna be redoing some paint on my truck. And the products that you're gonna need, I'm gonna lay out right here. That's my wedding ring. That's not the product that you're gonna need. But, um, and some of you who are painters are probably gonna be like, don't use that, that. but I don't really care. Hold on. <clears throat> the products you're gonna need to start from is water and some sandpaper. I was just looking for some uh, lower grit sandpaper. This is 1000 grit, I believe, or 600 grit. 600 grit sandpaper. Um, I wanna look for like some 320. Um, so what I'm doing is this this clear coat flake is really bad. So right here, there's no clear coat, and then here there is, and all this white crap, it needs to come off. So <clears throat> right here on this fender, or on this little, his body panel flip thing, there used to be, let's see if I can get you. Yeah, you can see it. That line right there and right there. So that ran all the way to about here. So it went from like here to, probably around here so I mean it's a big big spot of just clear coat flake but with what I did is I sanded it down with 600 grit got it nice and smooth I mean you can still feel the line but it's nowhere near as bad and it's not gonna flake anymore and then I took this stuff right here this engine enamel 500 degree resists up to 500 degrees it stops rust gas and oil resistant and this stuff is a gloss black so it it I mean it looks pretty pretty good for an, a 98 Dodge Dakota this looks pretty good and I can't really complain and this is <laughs> honestly it's the smoothest paint on the whole truck and um, and then after that what I did was I took this buffer and some of this scratch and swirl remover turtle turtle wax did that just get a quick couple uh, passes with the buffer and I was able to I was able to get all that nice and smooth and reasonably uniform and reasonably shiny as well. And I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm impressed with how it turned out. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the front fender here. I already kind of started. In the sanding, um, this fender is just as, about as bad as this side. Uh, this side's a little worse um, with it being more just a big spot. That side had just kind of a, a spot here and it kind of opened back up and, but I think what I'm gonna do was this one, cause it's got the antenna. I'm just gonna leave it and I'll probably go back to about here and then just fade the, the, the enamel paint into the paint. And um, I'll probably come down to right where this edge is, right here, probably come to, to the edge of the headlight and just draw a line. And then come to probably about an inch above the fender and then just about back to here. And then I can keep all that in the hood. I'm just gonna repaint the whole thing. Um, one of these days, I don't know when, but I know one of these days I will. I have people ask, I'll just say, it was from the junkyard. My other one wasn't the right color. And yeah, I don't know why I would say that, but I will. So, um, and you'll need a microfiber cloth just to kind of clean up. But yeah, as you can see, this one's got a patch here, a small patch here and a smaller patch here. And, uh, honestly, this, this fender isn't as bad. So it shouldn't take super long and I'm not gonna go all the way down here. I'm just gonna go up to here. And then um, I'm gonna sand all of this though, all the way back to, I don't know, probably just behind this one, honestly. And then just right here. So up to this line on the hood, right here and then down. So that's gonna be what I sand out. But like I said, I was looking for some more sandpaper so here's all my dad's sandpaper. So there's 600 grit, don't want 600. I want some 320 if he's got it. That's 40, that's not gonna work. 413, that could work. That could work, let's try that. It's a small enough piece. Let's see what else he's got in here. 150, there's 320, okay. So we'll take this 320 and this 413 and my 600. And remember, this is all wet, dry stuff. You don't want to do this dry. Um, yeah, 
it's just easier if you do it with uh, wet dry sandpaper you get that lubrication so let me uh let me get sanded and show you guys the process Now that you got it smooth, you're gonna wanna clean it. If you don't clean it, the paint's not gonna stick very well. And I'm not using a primer, so I wanna make sure this is a nice clean surface. Nice clean and dry before you paint. I'm not worried about taping anything off because I don't really care. because it's just a black paint and it matches pretty well as is. So I'm not super worried about that. But as you can tell, this is it's nice and smooth where those spots were, down to the primer. And the primer is smooth. Like I said, you wanna keep it nice and dry. And then we're gonna go ahead and put a coat of paint over it. And then I got down here too because there was a little spot that was really driving me nuts. So yeah, nice and smooth. I don't feel any of these anymore at all. So I'm gonna get our paint. I'm just gonna kind of clean up any anything around it. So if there's overspray, it doesn't just get stuck to the paint. the orange peel is horrible i'm gonna wet sand it get it smooth and i'm gonna like i said buff it out and get it reasonably polished and kind of shiny but yeah that's reasonably how easy it is i got some paint on my headlight oh well i don't really care one thing i could have done is i could have put that can of paint in some hot water to help it um, get warm and loosen up so it wasn't so blotchy but this will lay decently flat as it dries and then, like I said, I'll wet sand it. But no, it's, if it comes out anything like this did, I'll be really happy. This turned out really good. I mean, obviously you can, you can kind of see where they were. I didn't get it as smooth as I did the front, but the paint turned out really good. So I'm happy with it. It just, just makes the truck look so much better. Like right here, A pillars and B pillars are really bad. Just like all that, it's just, it needs fixed. And the entire roof is just horrible. So, yeah, I'm probably gonna end up Raptor lining this truck, but for the time being, I want something that looks a little bit nicer instead of this everywhere. So I'm doing this and honestly, I'm pretty happy with it so far. It's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the other side and then um, I'll come back and I'll show you when I get that one done sanded. All right, I'm back. I got this side, the passenger side uh, fender done. It's clean, it's prepped, it's ready to be painted. So let me show you what I was talking about earlier. Talking about putting your paint in some hot water. What it does is it helps your paint thin up a little bit. So it sprays it a lot cleaner. So I need to clean some of this up still, but it is painted, it is smooth, or not painted, it is sanded, it is smooth. I got back to here. And I'm gonna, I went ahead and covered the, the headlight with the tack rag because I don't want to deal with it anymore. And I'm going to use the dirty rag just to kind of clean this up because none of this is going to get painted down here. But I don't want to leave dirty um, a dirty spot for the paint to overspray and then like stick to that. See like right here? I didn't know that was there. So I might just squirt some paint in there just to keep it from rusting. So yeah, let me uh, finish warming that up and then I will show you the process of painting this one. So this side's dry. I gotta wet sand it, but there's some, uh, there's a couple spots that are kind of popping up, but 
it just looks so much better than where it did. So this is an after. But yeah, no, it looks so much better than it did. And like I said, I still need to wet sand it and uh, put, a, put a polish wheel to it and some compound to try to get it a little smoother. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now while that side dries and I will show you the process. see the, the different shades of gloss on there but I mean you can see the phone pretty well there but it's pretty blurry there but honestly I don't care it looks so much better same with this side it just looks so much better painted and fixed and corrected to the best of my ability and this still looks really good too so you know, and this little, the little stuff, that's all what makes a paint job look bad, let alone a freaking hood. So, you know, if we can fix all the big stuff and then do the little stuff, I'm, uh, I'm good with that. So, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to see what I can get done today. I'm not going to mess with the hood though, um, but I'm probably going to do maybe the eight pillars and stuff, but I will get back to you on what exactly I get done and the difference it makes. All right, guys, so I went ahead and um, went ahead and did the A, B, and D pillars. So I did the passenger side already. These ones I really kind of just didn't do the best of job on just because I don't really care. And I just wanted to get rid of the flake. So I did a quick sand, nothing crazy. And um, just put a quick coat of black on it. And then this is the passenger side. This turned out really good. It's got that little gloss to it, so I'm happy with that. Here's the driver's side, the one that we buffed. I haven't buffed the other side yet. Okay, and then here's the A and D, D, A, B, and C pillar as well. Like here is real splotchy. I didn't, my can of paint wasn't warm enough, but I can probably sand it all down after it dries and get it nice and smooth. Maybe add another coat. But like I said, I don't really care that much. I just did it more to get rid of the, the flake. But I mean, just from here, looking at it, it already looks so much better. So I can't really complain. And once I get this hood painted one of these days, it's gonna turn out just fantastic. So yeah, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, there's not much else to do with this. Uh, I think I got one more spot that I need to sand down real quick. But it's not anywhere near as bad as the rest of them. So um, it won't take very long at all. But yeah, so I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys learned something. You don't need, if you're just having a, if you just have a beater vehicle and you just want to fix some clear coat, you don't need you don't need the 2K clear. You don't need any of that crap. If it's just a beater car, like my truck's a beater. I take it off road all the time. Like, look at this. If this was, if this wasn't a beater, I would fill that in and I would fix that, but I don't care. I don't, I really don't. Like for example, here's another Dean. Here's a dent. Um, there's like three on my tailgate. There's one there, there, uh, right there. This big old honker. I mean, there's tons of scratches, but I don't care. You know, I just wanted to not have clear coat. Like, I want to 
want it to look a little better, you know? So that's why I did what I did. And using this engine enamel works really good because one, it's high heat resistant, it's gloss and it's black. And my truck, I don't give a crap what the paint coat is. It's black, it looks black to me, so I'm gonna paint it black, don't care. But no, so if you guys just have a beater vehicle and you guys just wanna get rid of the clear coat flake, do this, it works great. It looks good, not amazing, but it looks good. Good enough to where at a distance, you're like, dang, that's, that's still a nice truck. And for a 98, I don't really care at all. I think I've said that enough, I just don't. It's a beater truck that I use as my daily. So, you know, and eventually I'll use it as an off-road rig full time. But that day is still a ways away, so. But yeah, guys, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something new, um, you know, little tips and tricks and whatnot. But yeah, if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe. That red button that says subscribe there, and the little bell. That'd be awesome. And then don't forget to hit the like button as well. And if you guys have any questions, I mean, I can put in a link to a, a buffer in my description. But to be completely honest, guys, I don't think you guys are stupid. You guys know how to look up a buffer. Or um, at O'Reilly's or whatever, and I'm pretty sure you can get them at Walmart for pretty cheap too. Just keep your eye out; you might find it. So appreciate it, guys. We will see you.